All right, so first off, back in 2016, you guys set the goal of writing and recording a new song every month. Mm -hmm. And you've pretty much been sticking to that. Yeah, save for a couple of months here and there because the holidays are just craziness. But right. uh, yeah, we've maybe missed four months total since then. Wow, okay, I and think. what I'm wondering is what has writing to that schedule taught you? It's a great question. It's, it, deadlines are really good for any creative project, I think. And I think before, really? yeah, because artists need a fire under their ass. <laughs> they really do. Because, you know, you just procrastinate. It's like, no, it's not quite right. I'll just sit on it. But the, it's been great. It's, it's forced us to become prolific, mm. which is really positive. Mm -hmm. um, can't think too hard about the creative decisions. You kind of just got to shoot from the hip and just trust your taste. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I've kind of lately, I've been, I've been telling, describing the tracks as like fancy demos because in a month, I can't quite get it to, you know, mix wise and, and as a band, we can't quite get the arrangement exactly where we want it. Yeah. But we can at least like get it pretty close and give us an idea of like what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. That's so it's exciting enough to listen to and, you know, for the patrons and whatnot. And, but anyway, so yeah, it causes us to make decisions quicker. Mm -hmm. Not overthink things, not deliberate, you know, it's just, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Move on, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's changed the process radically, but mm -hmm. I, I would say in a positive way. And then is it, is it you, is it, uh, um, is it everyone that decides, okay, it's good to ship, that's enough? Unfortunately, because of how tight the deadlines have been and how many like, other things like we're all juggling myself, because I record and mix everything, mm -hmm. I'm the bottleneck, right? It's <laughs> like my schedule kind of ends up being what uh, yeah. holds things up. So s too many times I've been bouncing the mix like the day it needs to post, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and the guys like don't have an opportunity to listen to it or critique it. Mm -hmm. I don't prefer that. But for the sake of just getting the idea out there, it's, it's fine for now. I mean, it used to bother me a lot more because we were trying to bring these tracks to ultimate completion every month. But realizing that that's, that's probably not the wisest way to go about it. Because when we put them out to the public and actually release them, we're going to tweak them and refine them. And, you yeah, know, right. we'll have sat with them so we can be a little more detached. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, what's good about this? What's bad? And we can improve upon it. Okay, um, okay. But yeah, unfortunately, the, a lot of times it comes down to me just because of time constraints. But ideally, everyone gets their ears on the mix. I really, I trust in the process, you know, like mm -hmm. that's part of what makes it easier for me to just get it out there. It's like if people hear it and they're cool with it, yeah. then I have faith in that. If people are like, yo, that doesn't sound good, I'll listen to that and we'll, and we'll fix it, you know? Okay, okay. So, Right now I'm the bottleneck, so it ends up being me uh, <laughs> making a lot of like last minute decisions. Mm -hmm. But I don't prefer that. Yeah. And ideally, we start banking them so that it doesn't come down to the wire like that. Mm -hmm. I like having the input from everyone else. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, talking about the fact that you are the producer and you've been producing the band's tracks for a few years now mm. and uh, um, as also engineering them and, and all of that. I'm curious, how has that changed how you see the songs? It's difficult because I think each step of the process needs to kind of not fully consider the next step. You know, like you can't wear all the hats at the same time. Yeah. So over the past, it's been about 14 years now, the band's been together, that defining those separate processes has been a slow growing uh, process for me. Mm -hmm. So initially it's very difficult to separate them. You know, like you start writing it and I'm already trying to think of like, oh, this is how it'll sound in the mix and yeah. it'll kind of be like this. And, uh, and that's kind of the beginning. Contrasting with now, I try not to think about any of that. I mm -hmm. just, does it feel good raw the way it is? Because if it feels good raw and sounding, you know, without polished sounds or anything like that, then you know, once you do that next process, it's only going to get enhanced. So yeah. let the skeleton of the idea or whatever you're doing stand on its own two feet so you can feel good about it without 
you know, I used to comfort myself like, oh, it's all right, but it'll sound way better once we have a string arrangement on it. You, know yeah, I mean? right. you don't want to think that way. <laughs> you don't want the s string arrangement to save the song. If you need the yeah. string arrangement to like make the track good, you're probably polishing a turd at that point. Right. So, you don't, you don't want to think that way. Right. So uh, does, it, does that answer? No, no, definitely. Some, some it's way? like I, I once heard someone talk about cooking. Like they said salt and something else. Salt and something else was cheating. And, and basically, you add that at the end, you know, but you, the goal is to get the food to the point where it tastes really great without having to do that. That's the right concept, although I cook with salt and pepper out of the gate. <laughs> like I'm sauteing my onions and garlic. I okay. add the salt and pepper right away. Just, right. It's just a habit. I don't know if you should do that. <laughs> I'm sure there's like different schools of thought and, and, uh, and chef school. I, I don't even cook. I, uh, <laughs> so. I love cooking. Oh, okay. But really? it's, like, it's a lot like making music, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's creative and you're tweaking it. You smell it as it's coming together. Right. You're tasting it. It's like, oh, a little more of this, a little yeah. more of that. And yet you have to at least let it go at some point and say, okay, it's time to serve. Time to serve, exactly. Right. Yeah. I do have a bad habit of making our house guests wait till like 10 at night because <laughs> I'm just like, can't get it right. It needs no. a little bit more, yeah. a little bit more. It doesn't, it doesn't really, but it's just for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not that bad. <laughs> and then, but um, I'm curious also, you know, has all of this producing and, 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 and such, has it, I don't know, has it changed how you hear the band as a whole? Oh, sure. Um, well, it, I'm much more mindful of all the parts and all the ingredients, mm -hmm. you know, of the arrangements. Yeah. Um, and it used to actually paralyze me, to be honest. Like, when, whenever we try to take it to the live scenario, like on the stage, yeah. um, I'd want to hear it the way I heard it in the studio, oh. you know, and that would, I don't think that's a good thing, but my mind would just automatically, like, oh, it doesn't sound right because it's not what I'm used to. You mm -hmm. know, you spend so many hours in the, in the studio on a track and you know ex you know it so intimately by the end that yeah. then you go to play it live you really have to just let all that go yeah and i've now i don't even think about that to be honest with you i just now it's more like when we play it if it feels good in the moment for what it is mm -hmm. then i'm happy with it you know and i don't have to i'm not trying to like get it to sound like like the seat like the album if that makes sense yeah it yeah. should be the best version of it with what we're doing in the moment right does that answer the question? No, no, I think so. And also, because I've talked to a number of musicians who also very much believe that a live performance should be different yeah. than the album. I mean, you want to have the essence of whatever it is that song was. The crowd should be able to tell what song you're playing. Yeah, and exactly. And dig that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> you don't want it to be so rote that it's like, well, we could have just sat at home and listened to the, to right. the album. Right, exactly. I think... Our songs have so many elements in them that to execute them to a T, uh, well, it would be quite a challenge for one. I don't think it would be as fun mm -hmm. for us. And I don't know if it'd be as fun for the fans yeah. if we were like, you know, there's certain things you want, obviously, you know, like I'm disappointed every time I forget lyrics. Yeah. I'm sure fans <laughs> don't like that, right? But, um, you know, if that, if that one line is a little embellished live, you know? Yeah. Sometimes that's just fun. It's just like something that happened in the moment. It came and went. Right. You know, and it's different. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and, uh, one time I was in, in, in a, uh, a radio studio and, and, and Stephen Stills was being interviewed and he was, he was doing a cover of a Bob Dylan tune and mm -hmm. some uh, vent blew off some air and part of the, like the last f uh, uh, bit of lyrics went off the stand and so he's like, well, meant to be, and just, you know, <laughs> you know. You gotta and just, roll with it yeah, and in just the said, moment. Yeah, yeah, and just said, all right, all right, it'll be a little different, that'll yeah. be my, my take, my version. That's really the core attitude I think you have to possess when you're doing anything live. Mm -hmm. You have to just be rolling with it. Yeah. You can't try to control it, because stuff's gonna go wrong, first of all, Yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. Things always go wrong. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I tell people, you just get really good at making mistakes and adapting to all the problems <laughs> that are happening in real time yeah. and not trying to control it. Right. You just got to kind of go. <laughs> or what's, what's the rule with live performances? If you make a mistake, do it again and people will think you yeah. did it on purpose. It's like jazz. Right, you know? yeah. <laughs> it's, if you make the same mistake twice, it's jazz. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
That's a trope. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, it also reminds me, because there was someone, uh, I want to get this right, because they had a great uh, description of your song, Human Convention. Mm. And it was, the, the way that they, they talked about it was, um, it was this fantastic blend of intricacies. Uh, oh, here we go. For a f- few other bands ever create tracks as gorgeously intricate, yet accessible, as Human Convention. And, which I thought, uh, number one, really captures the two extremes mm. of, of that song and, and a number of your songs. Mm. But I'm also curious, for you, what takes priority? The intricacies or the accessibility? For me personally, as like a music lover, yeah. I love melody and I love when I can hang on to something, mm-hmm. you know? Oftentimes, if a band gets too intricate and forgets the mel, I feel like without melody, you don't have anything. Mm. You know, you just have, I don't know, like scales and, yeah. you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever, it's just, just like chops, which yeah. are cool and impressive, but if you want something to lodge itself into the hearts and minds of someone, like it needs to be melodic and it needs to be something that, that really sings. Mm-hmm. So for me, I would say like, I'm always gonna err on the side of melody and accessibility. That, that, I consider them one and the same. As long as the melody is not being, melody's king. Okay. Quincy Jones will tell you that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm not gonna argue with him. Yeah. Um, so that has to take priority. If stuff starts getting too fancy and it's crapping on the melody, like, we'll, everyone kind of shares that though in the band. You know, like, yeah. while, while we're creating, we like doing fun, intricate stuff. That's part, part of the challenge is how much intricate stuff can we put in here for fun without mm-hmm. crapping on what's, the song is. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, it's intentional to toe that line between the two with okay. melody being at the top of the hierarchy, definitely. Right. Yeah. Okay. Melody, accessibility, you know, I don't really listen to super technical music mm-hmm. for its technicality. It has to have some melodic element that grabs me, that yeah. makes me feel it. Okay. And I think most people are that way. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's the thing that makes you sing back a song mm. on your own. Yeah. Or one of the best descriptions I ever heard was uh, um, talking about what makes Eric Clapton's guitar playing so great was that you can, you can sing his guitar solos. Yeah. You know, because it, it's, it's very melodic. Yep. Now, along those same lines, a lot of your music, a lot of Kendo's music, um, it starts, it stops, it changes tempo within the song. Um, it makes left turns here and there. And I'm curious, how much of that is, okay, that's the way I'm hearing the song, and how much of it is, I don't want to be too predictable, or I want to... Uh, uh, th- throw in this little jog mm. on purpose. Well, that kind of speaks to the writing process a little bit of like how we construct these tunes. The majority of the tunes that we have written for Patreon and also for Happy However After um, will be in a room and a lot of times like uh, Steve, our founding drummer, he, him and Kelly Shonda, our founding keyboardist, like they kind of I would say they, they always would start an idea with them just jamming on what Kelly's doing and, and just find some fun like vibe, right? Mm-hmm. And usually I'll hum some ideas over whatever they're doing and then we'll kind of together decide where it feels like it wants to go mm-hmm. without having, you know, we don't want it to, to, to kind of just keep going unless it feels like it wants to. Not for the sake of going somewhere else, mm-hmm. but only if in our guts we're like, okay, cool, we've been vamping on this for a while. It feels like it could go to this totally other thing. Or sometimes we'll be jamming on something and we dig it. And they'll just start playing something totally different, but it's totally cool and inspiring. And yeah. like, let's see if we can incorporate that. You know, So mm-hmm. there's not a, ru- a rule in general other than if we dig what we're doing, we just kind of roll with it. And then that process, there's a refinement process as we go along. So we'll kind of have that raw like collection of different sections and mm-hmm. passages. And then we'll decide, all right, maybe this could be uh, shorter. Usually when I go to write the melody, I'll, we'll, we'll record the skeleton in Pro Tools, and then I'll go and start writing melody over it with piano. Okay. And if it feels like 
Um, I could change some of the phrasing or the length of some of the sections to have a more effective melody mm -hmm. structure. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll take those liberties mm. to help focus it more and, and have it feel more like a song. So, okay. you know, I'm never too big a fan if a song gets too proggy for the sake of it being proggy. Yeah. You know, if it's kind of like, I don't know why it went there. It didn't feel it. And look, <laughs> that's a completely subjective line, yeah. of course, because there's people who listen to us and they're like, this is too much. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I, I get it. It is too much sometimes. <laughs> We're having fun. <laughs> you know? That's fine. Yeah. Uh, for, so wherever our line is, you right. know, we maintain it ourselves. We, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll be pretty, uh, pretty careful not to go too crazy, but, but we're not afraid to have some fun. Right. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you, know, you, you experiment, you, you explore yeah. within the song, but you've got your own true magnetic north. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Got to feel it. You got to feel what you're doing. Like, right. Would I want to listen to this at all? You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, that's a tough thing. That's a tough question when you're creating it first. Mm -hmm. It takes, I, I would say, it takes years of just creating to develop a skill set to be able to separate yourself from what you're making, hmm. to be able to then come back to it and be like, okay, is this good? That takes a long time to develop that muscle. Yeah. Um, but it, I would encourage any creator to develop it because it's a powerful tool to mm -hmm. be able to discern after you make it. You don't want to judge yourself as you're creating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But once you create it, you, you make the recording, sit back, and be like, this is good. Right. <laughs> and be willing to be honest. It's okay. Not everything you do is going to be great. Yeah. So, right. It's Although that's interesting because it's, it's where a lot of bands, that's where they rely on a different producer. Sure. And that's a great tool. You know, and, and, and uh, a different set of ears, you know, someone who's coming to it, you know, kind of fresh. And so it seems like you've had to do these mental gymnastics to be able to get yourself to the point where you can be the artist, but also take an audience point of view sure. at it, if that's. Yeah. Makes sense. Personally, for me, it was birthed out of just being too controlling, <laughs> you know? And then, uh, and then after that, you know, realizing, like, you need to not do that and, yeah. you know, let the process happen. That's why I always, I always say, like, when we're ready, like, just have faith in the process. Like, if one of us isn't digging something but everyone else is digging it, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, trust everyone else. Yeah. Let's just see where it's going. Mm -hmm. Because if everyone else is feeling it, you don't want to kill that vibe, you know? You just... Let yeah. the idea unfold naturally, and then judge it once we've put the bow on it. You yeah, know, right. as to whether or not it's up to our our standards. If you, because a lot of times we've, we've had that. You know, like uh, it's why I've talked to Jeff, our bass player. We've had a couple conversations. He's like, man, honestly, like I didn't know what this was until like I heard the last mix with like the vocals and everything on it. And mm -hmm. it's like, I get it, <laughs> totally get it. Yeah, it's like because. If it's not, if it, well, firstly, the vocals are, I like to think that, you know, my role as a vocalist is to kind of tie things together with the vocal melody and, and yeah. make it feel cohesive. Um, so a lot of times if that's not there yet, it just feels like a bunch of parts. Again, it's missing the melody. Yeah, yeah, you know? right. Um, this is, I'm speaking to our Patreon process now. Sorry, I'm like jumping yeah. around. No, 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 I guess. Um, yeah, I'm like, man, I, I don't know what this is going to be. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, me either. Right. Half the time, like the past few writing sessions we've had, mm -hmm. we literally left the writing session and just been like, let's see what these turn into. Right. You know, like, we'll, we'll write just <laughs> these skeletons, we'll record these skeletons and then start producing them. And then yeah. I'll put lyrics and melodies to them. And, you know, just having faith that it's going to turn into something cool. Wow. Okay. But it's taken many years to, ha to be able to have that trust mm -hmm. in ourselves to to do it like that. Yeah. Like we didn't come out of the gate like that. We came out very second guessing ourselves all the time and spending way more time on each track, mm -hmm. on, on, on making creative decisions for each track, yeah. which is, you know, I, I would like to spend a little more time than we do, but we were spending a lot more. Mm -hmm. No, but it, you know, I'm, I'm guessing also once you, you get into, well, you know, if you pardon the, the term, a rhythm with each other, yeah. you know, and, and, and in sync and then better able to read, oh, I get where he's going with this yeah. and, and that kind of thing. And knowing like everyone in the room is there for a reason mm -hmm. and they've got good ears. And so it's like, trust them. Yeah. If you're, you know, if you're not feeling, like you could say something and see if anyone else feels it. But if everyone's like, no, actually, I think this is going to be really cool. It's like, okay, 
Mm -hmm. Everyone in this room is great, so yeah. let's, let's trust. Okay, it's you like know? this musical trust form. You need to have that trust. Yeah. Ha yeah, it's crucial, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then there's, you guys uh, have such an interesting sound, a different sound, an eclectic sound. Hmm. You know, it, it's funny to read either reviews of, you know, your albums or your shows and stuff. Because I, I was looking through all these different, you know, reviews of different performances from different cities. Yeah. And they all start off, they all describe you differently, you know. Uh, you know, the rock band Kindo, the jazz fusion band Kindo. Yeah. Was gonna, yeah. You know, and they're all right, in sure. a way. But it's, it's just funny because it's so eclectic. But what I'm wondering is you, you pull from so many different sources. Is, you know, is every direction a potential Kindo direction or is there a limit where you're like, you know, that's not us? That's a good question. We're pretty generous with what we allow ourselves to do, you know, genre-wise, but um, I don't know, man. Like, we probably won't do a trap track, you know? We probably <laughs> won't do, like, trap music. Yeah. Um, but inside the realm of, um, like, instrument instruments, organic instrumentation. Mm -hmm. We're down to explore whatever, really. Mm. You know, if we're feeling it. Yeah. And we're always hoping in ha that our fans are along for the ride. Because mm -hmm. all we're doing is exploring what's possible with different genres and putting it into the soup. Yeah. And sometimes people like it, and sometimes like, yeah, that's not my favorite thing you did. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's fine. Like. Not everything we do is my favorite. Yeah. You know, so that's okay too. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, nothing is for everyone. Yeah. You know, so. But I think it, it's, it's in the eye of the beholder. So like you said, whoever's, whoever's seeing us or listening to us, whatever part of us they like, they'll gravitate towards that and, mm -hmm. and kind of cling to that. And yeah. that's cool. And I think as a result, we've had like, we have a super diverse crowd. It's, yeah. it's pretty wild. I mean, age, gender, you name it. It's, mm -hmm. it's. It's all over the place. Yeah. Kids, you know, like, and they all cling to a different thing. Okay. It's really interesting. I, I don't really, I think it's just because we may, we never committed to a particular genre. Yeah. We've accidentally created our own, like, mix of genres. Mm -hmm. I think there's more bands and artists doing this now that there's just, more people in the world and a bigger marketplace to create music and so yeah people are down to hear new stuff that they haven't heard before i think right more open-minded nowadays than than maybe 40 years ago yeah well well that makes me wonder you know because in the old days there was a system there was the radio system or even yeah. the mtv system and that kind of thing and you you aimed your song at whatever system was in power at the time right and you know, the A&R man is like, all right, here's what I think the next single right. should sound like kind of thing. Right. But now that's kind of all gone away. And then the, the bad part is it's, in some ways, it's harder for musicians to make a living as, as a result of that thing. But I'm wondering if the flip side of that is, okay, we can throw a lot of the rules just out with the garbage and make this up as we go along. Mm. Like, you know, did, could a band like Kindo have existed like even just 20 years ago? Not without a ton of luck. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to find someone who could advocate for you. An A&R person who caught a vision is like, hey, I could, I could turn this into something that makes money. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's, they have to see that. Uh, yeah, the internet is largely the reason why we exist. Mm. It's a double-edged sword, though. Because yeah. on one hand, it's like we found all these wonderful people who listen to us on the internet. But on the other hand, there's all this pressure now you have to be on social media and do all this. The bands are now doing all this stuff that they never had to deal with before. Yeah. But it's also created a middle class for the musicians now. There's like a middle class ba working band now. Mm -hmm. And there's more, there's more room in there than there was before. So more artists can exist at that mid-level. You know, most people may not have heard of them, but they can make a living at it. Yeah. And that's, that's encouraging. Mm -hmm. You know, that's cool. And we're... Uh, you know, we're grateful for that. It's, the, the new landscapes allowed us to do what we do. It demands more of, of you. You have to do a lot more like DIY stuff, but if this is what you want to do and you're willing to do that, it's a good thing, mm -hmm. I think. 
Yeah, and uh, I mean, you guys are now, you run a business, you know? Yeah. I mean, not to put it in kind of a cold, harsh No, term, but it's but, true. You know. It's got, it's at the point now, it's like, we've been in this 14 years, I'm married, like, my wife and I want to start a family, like, we got to start making money, mm -hmm. or it's not going to last. And things like Patreon, that's what's enabled us to not break up four <laughs> years ago, you know? It's, yeah. Honestly, it's it's been amazing. It's allowed me to spend more time on the recordings, it's allowed us to tour, we got a van and a trailer, like, it's changed everything, and mm. um, it's it's really great when we're at the point now where we kind of need to expand our team because yeah. we're kind of inundated with all the day-to-day -day responsibilities. Like, okay, let's delegate some power away here, and uh, so we can bring this into the next phase of sustainability for us. So we can make a more comfortable living at it. Because right now it's like everyone lives check to check. Do yeah. a tour like this. It's not the band's not walking. The business isn't walking away with a lot of money. We're making a, a modest stipend so we can justify being out for a month. Yeah. You know, because every most of us live in New York. It's expensive to live there. And, yeah. Um, but that's also if you're a professional musician, you're in New York, you're in Nashville, you're in LA. You know, and that's the grind. Yeah. So, juggling that grind with trying to launch a creative uh, project like Kindo that you know demands lots of time and energy without compensation. Mm -hmm. It's a juggling act, man. Yeah. We've just managed to not drop all the balls yet. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then looking back on your, on your most recent album, Happily Whatever After. Happy However After. Happy However After, yeah, yeah. excuse me. It's okay, it's, um, it's a weird title. Yeah. yeah, it's good. No, I knew it was a fun, it was a fun play on words, which I, I love about it. But, I'm curious, what was, what was the most fun song to record for that particular mm. album? Human Convention was really fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, admittedly, we had a blast with that song. That was just like a... That, Obsolete, is one of my personal favorites from that record. It's a little more chill. It's got kind of more like a Radiohead kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, I just love, I love the space in it. Mm -hmm. Especially as a band that like finds a way to quickly fill as much space as possible <laughs> per <laughs> per square second, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> We're uh, I really appreciate when we do a track that's like breathes a little bit, and that track has some nice breath to it, and mm -hmm. just kind of lets it simmer, it simmers, and you just sit with it for a bit. Yeah, um, yeah. It's fun to play with space. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's that one's a little heavier too. I mean, in, in lyrically. Some, yes. Sure. Yeah. yeah that's. That's like straight from my diary. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, I just, well, because I've lived through sort of, I grew up falling in love with music in the 90s, early 90s, mm -hmm. bands like Smashing Pumpkins, um, Radiohead, and you, you know, they're your heroes, and you see how they do things, and that's what you now believe a band is, like, oh, we got to do this, this way, and uh, you get a label, you know, and you do, you do things by the book, and since right. the landscape's changed so much, in the middle of me trying to, in the middle of us trying to make this band work, mm -hmm. I do, we do feel a little disoriented in the new landscape because, you know, these young, like, 20 year old kids, they were born with the internet in their hands. Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, you're supposed to this and make these videos. And it's like, you reach all these people. And I'm just like, I don't <laughs> know how this stuff works really that well. Yeah. And I feel obsolete. Hmm. You know, I, I feel like I'm becoming obsolete in that, in that way. And, I resisted it for a, for a while, and, and now, admittedly, I'm trying to learn as much as I can, but also admitting that it's too late for me. I need to, we need to find some people that can just help us, that have the skills. It's mm -hmm. gotten too complicated now. Like, even like five years ago, you could probably do your own social media. Mm -hmm. Now there's a new platform every year. The, yeah. They change the rules so they can make more money every year, mm -hmm. and it, it's a full time job just to do that part of it. So yeah. Whatever that that song was written out of the frustration of just not knowing how to navigate the new landscape. It's right, right. Okay. It's disorienting. <laughs> it makes you feel old. Yeah. You know, it's like, wow, I am that old guy that's like, yeah, stupid new technology is ruining everything. You know, I never thought I'd be that guy, right. but <laughs> here I am. Right. <laughs> hey, I I still have vinyl, damn it. You know. I, and I not like hipster vinyl kind of. I have records that I you, bought man. when they were new. You good know? for you. I uh, I have hipster vinyl. Right. Yeah, I, <laughs> I uh, my wife and I we we got a nice record player. I mean I appreciate Fidelity as an audio engineer. Like, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I got a really nice uh, it was a U-turn audio. They make handmade turntables in oh. Boston. Uh, 
really nice stuff. I just did an endorsement for them. Can I have free turntables? Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we've just been collecting records. And I love the medium because the medium uh, creates a different kind of music listener than, yeah. than like streaming does. You know, streaming, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. You go to an all-you-can-eat buffet and you don't actually really appreciate any of the, f any of the food like that deeply. It's just like, oh, yeah. there's so much. I'm just gonna have a little bit of this and you don't eat half of it, you know? Like yeah. you see people's tables are filled with just half eaten plates. Yeah. And that's kind of how like music is right now. People are just like, oh, this new song, my favorite band. And you listen to like three seconds of it like, and you're like a squirrel. You're just like, oh, and this other track over here. <laughs> and you just forget about it. Everything has a half life of three seconds, it feels yeah. like. Yeah. Whereas the vinyl, it's like you, you go to the store, the artwork's really beautiful. You're like, mm. wow, I can't wait to see what this sounds like. You go home, you take it out, you put it on the turntable, you have to put the needle down and you sit down and you like, it's, a, it's an active listening experience. You yeah. gotta flip the record, you know? Yes. It, you have to decide that you're gonna keep listening to it. Yeah. Whereas like Spotify, you just press play, it's just gonna keep going and you're just like tune out. Right. You're doing a million other things. Yeah. It's not important anymore. Yeah. You know, I, I think anything that brings you into the moment forces you to just Listen to music and nothing else. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love that because that's a tough experience to have in an increasingly busy world. Yeah. You know? And I, I feel bad for kids that don't have that, if only because that was always my experience of being a total music junkie. Yeah. Is, you know, even when, when, when discs came out and everything like that, when, when it was a band, when I couldn't wait for that album to come out, yeah. I would buy it, go home, and put the headphones on or put it on the stereo, and I would just listen yeah. to that album from minute one to, yep. the, to the very end. Such it a was, different experience. Yeah. It was so exciting. Right. It's going to the record store, you were hoping they didn't sell out. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you'd get in line if it was really popular, you know? Right. Or you'd go to, uh, or even just going to the record store, not looking for anything in particular, but they had the listening stations. It was like, what's new? You could discover some cool new stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, record stores had that important job of curating their shop with cool music and you'd find, it could be something you just like the artwork and you go listen to it like, oh, this is cool. And then you found, that's how you found a new artist and it was yours and you yes. share it with your friends. You'd be like, yo, check out this album. Like, right. It was just such a different culture to it. Mm -hmm. Now it just feels so, it feels gross. I'm just going to say <laughs> it. It feels really gross. I don't like it. It's just like, yeah, I sent you a link to a new track. It's like, right. <laughs> blah. <laughs> and then also for the artists, they would plan out okay, what is the order of the songs? And in the days of vinyl, what's gonna be side one, what's gonna be side yeah. two? And oftentimes it's, it's a different vibe, it's a different feel, it's a different story, you know. You know what's funny? Go, 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 no, go ahead. What's funny about that is uh, we just had our vinyl cut with uh, Scott Hall up at Masterdisc for Happy However After. Oh, okay. And it's the first thing we ever did on vinyl and I was really excited, it was like a kid in a candy store because I got to be there when he was cutting it. And I, I didn't realize uh, a big variable in what determines the album order is how much music you can fit on each side. Yes. You only have so much time. Right. So a lot of times the producer's got to decide, like, you might have a certain track listing, but if you don't have the budget to cut, like, a double LP, you're like, I'm sorry. Like, this track is too long to fit on the same side as this other track, and it can't be in the order you want it to. Otherwise, we don't have enough space on the disc. Yeah. So... They'd have, we had to do, like the order on the vinyl is actually different. On our vinyl is different ah, than our CD. Okay. Uh, for that reason, because we wanted to not compromise fidelity at all. We did like 280 gram LPs cut at 45 RPM, which is just ridiculous, you know, like. No, oh, that's it's, awesome. It's, it sounds really good. I'm yeah. really excited and proud about how it turned out, but you, that forces you to compromise, like, okay, you can't have the same order because you've got to fit the tracks yeah. on, the, on each side properly. Right. So anyways, continue your question. But no, it's a, it's, no it's, a, it's a whole different vibe. It's, it's, it's a minor plug. One of the bands I work with, Huey Lewis and the News. Uh, That's they, awesome. The, for the 30th anniversary of their sports album, they played the album yeah. in its entirety. And, and, and they took a break, and Huey said at the point in the concert where he's like, 
this is the point where you would have to flip the record That's over. too cool. And he said, <laughs> how many of you remember turning the record over? You know, and, and people just scream, yes. you know, and everything, yeah. Oh, good for him, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's, it's, it's a whole different absorption experience. And, and it made, you know, even concept albums, much more interesting like like Pink Floyd's The Wall, mm. where the very first thing you hear on track one is where we started, and the very last thing you hear on the last track is isn't this, and so you, you get the idea it's a circular story, because yeah. isn't this where we started, and you go back all the way through it, and yep. so it's a whole other, you know, yep. experience, so. Yeah, and there was, that's a different artistic medium, you thought differently when you were making a record back then. Right, right. For so many different reasons, that's just one of the, yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the variables that were at play. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're recording the tape in the studio, you have limited t tracks, you, you know, you can't just add whatever, you're just thinking a lot more carefully about how you're going to compose the recording. Right. Although, there was something to be said for the, the, you know, you talk about the limitations of time. Okay, yeah. you know, we've got to crank this thing out by X number of days. Yeah. I think there's also sometimes maybe something for the limitations of the technology that you have available in the sense of, nowadays a lot of kids can really experiment with almost any kind of technology and, and you know, the number of tracks is infinite, yeah. but then you know you still go back to like Sergeant Pepper, which was recorded on like four tracks or something to that yeah. effect, or six maybe, yeah. you know. And it's like, wow, they did all of that with just six tracks, right. and you know now you have infinite number of tracks. But I don't think people are making necessarily music that's infinite more creative right. than like a Sergeant Pepper. Creativity requires limitations to like to really flourish. You can't just be unlimited potential. You, you'll just dither, because mm. there's just too many options. <laughs> you need limitations. And, um, I think that that was the advantage of the more limited technology. You were just not, there weren't as many decisions to make. It was just kind of like, this is what we have. You got to make it work, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, who was I talking? I was talking to one of my bandmates about this. Uh, I feel like right now, music is in a, an analog port would be like where food was like in the 70s and 60s when microwaves came out uh. and you had TV dinners. <laughs> Everyone just stopped learning how to cook, you know? It's like, oh, I don't have to learn how to do this anymore. You just press the button <laughs> yeah. and it comes out. And a lot of, you know, a lot of the modern recording software and stuff you can get, you really can click a couple things and it sounds like music. Yeah. And you don't even have to know much about music yeah. to and, have that happen, right? auto-tune. Yeah. So what's happening is like you have a lot more people making music, but they they don't they don't have as much of a foundation mm -hmm. uh, because they don't require it because the limitations have been removed. Yeah. Like to get into a recording studio back in the day, people you had to sound good just you. Yeah. People would be like you sound good. You should come into my studio. Mm -hmm. You know, like Sun Studios. Yeah. You know? yeah, like, yeah. like I can just put a mic up and it's gonna sound good. You know. Yeah. <laughs> That's not. That limitation doesn't exist anymore. You don't yeah. even have to know how to sing mm -hmm. anymore. It's yeah. crazy. You don't have to know how to play anything. Yeah. You can make a record, <laughs> you know? So that's, that's a, it's a brave new world we live in. Yeah. And it's, I think that, that being said, I think that the natural process of like the cream rising to the top, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily in mainstream music because there's still a lot of money deciding what that yes. is. Uh, but in the indie world, there's so much good music being made now mm -hmm. because on the flip side of it, people who couldn't afford to go into a studio who had the gifts and the knowledge now can make recordings. And so now there's so much good music, yeah. it's actually overwhelming. <laughs> 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 Lots of people are making really good music. There's right. a lot more bad music than there ever was too, but there's just more music in general. There's more people, our population is, what is it, doubled? Uh, something like that. Yeah. There's something like that. Probably since, since we've been talking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so, exactly. I mean, so it's, um, it, it's it's a different world now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But and then along the idea of these deep thoughts and 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 bold concepts, you know, the, again going back to the song "Human Convention," which yeah. which goes into some very heavy stuff, and and I love the 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 inherent contradictions that you play with. You know, like with lyrics like uh, standing still but moving miles per second yeah. and, and splitting the atom but still being connected. Yeah. And, you know, which is uh, some heavy 
deep thoughts that you don't get from your average mm. pop song mm -hmm. nowadays. And I'm curious, what what has been on your mind lately? That, mm. that you know, what is your mind churning through lately that might work its way into a song? Well, so like. I used to joke with my friends, like, if you asked me what my favorite hobby was, it would be existentialism. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I'm, I'm just, fa I'm fascinated with trying to wrap my mind around things that it just can't be wrapped around, mm -hmm. but trying to break it down in a way that, you know, I think poetry and, and, and lyrics and art, the role of it is to kind of try to get as close, take, take a piece of the unknowable and put it in a way where you can sort of taste it a little bit. Mm. You know, even if you can't intellectually like make sense of it, right? Yeah. So things like it's human convention. Uh, there's lots of like we're, uh, we're we're standing still, moving miles per second. Is that mm. the lyric? Yes. We'll find out if I remember that tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? What inspired that was the idea. It's like we're sitting here in this chair, but actually we're on a rock that's flying through space. Yeah. Miles per second. And spinning as it. And spinning as it goes while it's flying around the sun, which is also flying around a black hole. Yeah, right. You know, like, <laughs> so we actually don't know how fast we're moving. Right. At all. Yeah. Because there's no ideal frame of reference. We're both here sitting still, but flying at thousands of miles per second. And that's yeah. just like, that's real. Right. That's actually happening, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. And so I think... Um, so your oh, mind what, naturally plays with those ideas? I'm just fascinated. I'm, my mind loves to live in that world. Like, mm -hmm. like, just trying to grasp as much as I can about the nature of the universe and what any of this... This is crazy, man. Like, <laughs> I mean, genuinely, when I think of, like, just sitting here, this is impossible. The yeah. fact that we exist. Yeah. The fact that there's life or that we can have a conversation like all of this we take it for granted because it's all we've known but really what mm. is this yeah <laughs> what is this really i don't know right so i like to explore that like the the i don't knowness as well as the, like let me try to put it into some kind of way that we can at least appreciate yeah appreciate what this is and whatever way we can appreciate it and so things like Human Convention, I also love how uh, one of my favorite things about that song is the lyrics were inspired by the music because there's these like time changes and it's like bending yeah. the tempo. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just dealing with the fact like time's an illusion, you know, it's a, it is literally a human myth. It's just a unit of measurement we came up with so that we can navigate this reality that we don't understand. Yeah. But it helps us to make a little more sense out of it. You mm -hmm. know, it, it works. So we use it. Right. But it's not a... It's not real like, uh, like this table is real or, you yeah, know. Yeah, or like, you know, trees, rocks, that kind of right, thing. Right, yeah. right. Um, or even the concept, the tree is a concept. We've decided the tree ends at the dirt, right? Yeah, yeah. But we decided that. That's kind of an arbitrary right. judgment we've made. Mm -hmm. But it works. Yeah. So we roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I like exploring that and just reminding myself and, hope, and maybe just reminding Whoever, like, don't get so boxed in with what you think you know about the world because you don't really, all you know is most of the stuff we've made up about the world. Mm -hmm. That's pliable and yeah. that's in flux. Yeah. You know, don't get too attached, mm -hmm. I guess, is, is kind of like the, <laughs> like, I don't, no one knows what this is. Right. You know? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Okay, cool. I, is there anything we didn't touch upon that you want to talk about? Um, well, we touched about, upon the Patreon and how important that's been to us. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been, we've gone through a lot of uh, lineup changes over the past year. Um, you know, that's a, that's been, that's been difficult just because these are hard shoes to fill, and also, you know, we've been playing with some of these guys for 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Steve has not been touring with us the, this year and uh, he's kind of decided to step back a bit. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that that I, I won't get into yet. It's very complicated. Yeah. It's like a, any, it's like a marriage, you know? Like mm -hmm. when you're in a band that long, you're, your lives are tethered together. And yeah. sometimes people don't realize like how complicated that is. It's, it's crazy. And, Sometimes you you know you're where you want to go isn't the same place as the other people, mm -hmm. and that's part of life. 
Yeah. You know, but yeah. there's there's no hard feelings in that at all. You know, it's like I want everyone who's ever been a part of this or who is a part of it to to go on and become the best version of themselves possible. And if that means they're in the band doing that, awesome. And if that means they got another opportunity that's going to be better for them, awesome. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yeah. You know, it's hard to replace anyone. We, uh, you know, we also uh, had to find a new guitarist, uh, Johnny Air, previous guitarist. He just got an amazing opportunity that he definitely should not have turned down. And I'm glad he, I'm glad he didn't. But it's bittersweet because it's like, oh man, like you've been our guy. And yeah. who's going to be the next person? It's not, and, and you got to kind of remove your expectation. It's like, it's not going to be the same. It's just not. Mm -hmm. It's part of it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's not going to be exciting, good, and new. Yeah. And if you have the right attitude, we're going to keep doing it. It's mm -hmm. either that or break up. You know, that's the thing. You either find the new person or it's done. Mm -hmm. That's kind of your option. So Yeah. So it's almost like there is no option. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no choice here. It's just right. like, I'm going to do this maybe till I die. We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> God willing. Yeah. Hope that so. will be a long time.